Hey, what's up everyone? This is Sitlali and I just finished my graduating ceremony. 2019, I obtained my Master's of History for Cal State LA. In 2016, I obtained my undergraduate degree for history as well. I am graduating at Summa Cum Laude at 3.95. And I take great pride in the 95, even though I want it to be 4.0. And I wanted to just take this moment and share with you. I didn't want to take this off because I wanted you to see the proud, the, the pride that I have. I wanted you to see that I did my best to represent my people. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful ceremony. My partner was there. My suegra was there. My sister-in-law, my best friend, my alma gemela, uh, Vanessa was there. And it was powerful. It was beautiful just to see, you know, my own community, my own people, you know, beautiful and their caps and, you know, and the way that they decorated their caps with Mexican flags and American flags, you know, just representing, you know, it, representing who they are and apologetically, it was just beautiful. The energy was amazing. And today the ceremony was more intimate because it was only arts and letters. So it was only like um, history, sociology, all of that. It was beautiful. I liked it that way. Part of the ceremony, I will. I wanted to add and share that I was honored um, during the first few opening statements from the president of the college. He dedicated a few minutes to acknowledge me, like, to acknowledge my work, to acknowledge my journey. And it was beautiful. Like at first I thought they were just going to do like a minute, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, a few people are going to stand up, but no, it was basically just myself. And it was about a three minute, you know, uh, basically celebration of my work and my journey. And it blew my mind. And I have been very emotional because it's been a very emotional journey. But today, just hearing him say those contributions and what I do and hearing, you know, my colleagues and people in the audience screaming and, and clapping and being happy. It was really a moment that that will live in me forever. It's a moment that I never imagined because, you know, I when you do the work, you do the work because you love your people. You do the work because it, you can't be any other way. And that's how I've been for many years and just to to hear that, to see it, to feel it, it was beautiful. And I cannot end this video or go on to any other topic without acknowledging the history department of Cal State LA, without acknowledging my committee, which is Dr. Lee, Dr. Martin, and Dr. Ford, without acknowledging Dr. Sro, which is retiring, uh, Dr. Flager, so many vital people in that department, so many, you know, passionate and student-centered um, educators that really do take the time and really do care about our, our success, our success. And not only that, but for us to fine tune what our passion is, what our arguments are, what our research met methodology is. I mean, it's, it's just, it's multifaceted, you know, it's not just um, it's not just teaching and learning. It, it's so much, you know, it, it's, it's crosses so many boundaries. It crosses so many, so many layers. Right. And it was beautiful. And I wanted to show this video, um, for, I'm getting emotional for our youth, you know, our beautiful Brown youth who, who don't, you know, care, don't see this, you know, I'm not saying that the academic life is for everyone and everyone has to go to college, but if, if you have a passion for education, if you have a passion for, for learning something, a skill, uh, a discipline, and you are in our community, like if you are aware of the Chicano education pipeline, you know that statistically, you know, we're up against the stats, we're up against basically centuries of institutional repression of our people's contribution and participation to the model of education and in my particular discipline the model of of history and narrative and to be able to go through my journey which is a long journey with education it hasn't been like a graduated college you know i'm i'm done no it wasn't like that there's been so many things in my life that i went through 
that kind of dance together with my experience of education. And now that I'm at this point with my master's degree and I'm looking back, I really see how rich, you know, my experience is because I've been an activist all this time. I've been a poet. I've been involved with my with my community, with my people. And it's been a very zigzag road, a zigzag kind of journey, but I'm here, you know, I'm here and it's not, you know, I didn't grow up with a lot of my people, my family going to college or, or thinking about their future in this way. And nevertheless, I would meet people that were in college, but they seemed to be from a way other world, you know, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the sense of like preserving of our culture, promoting of our culture. And it was very confusing to me. And there's just so many things I can talk about that, so many things. But the most important thing is for you, I want to dedicate this video for, for our youth, you know, for our youth who are in junior high, high school, and you're intelligent, you know, you just don't know what you want to do yet. You haven't found the passion, you haven't found the light, and you really don't have anyone in your family to talk to, you know, um, it's not really something that you grew up with. And I want to tell you that I can relate to you, that I can relate to that narrative. I can relate to that story. You know, I didn't imagine myself going to college. I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't a reality. It wasn't something that was in my frame of reference growing up. It didn't start happening to me until my senior year after I went to East LA College. And even at East LA College, it, it still felt surreal. It didn't feel real to me. Um, and so I started meeting very, very, very important people in my life, like um, Mr. Aki Mayara, he's a history instructor that changed my life forever. Um, the dean at that time for East LA College was Oscar Valeriano Jr. He absolutely transformed my life. And the many professors and instructors that, that were there at East LA College and you start building a community you start you start realizing a sense of of integrity you start realizing your your strengths right your skills you start noticing these things and i want to tell you know junior high school students high school students even elementary school students you can you can learn you can grow you can pursue your education and also nurture your culture and also nurture your community and also nurture who you are because in this system that we're in this political climate of trumpism and white supremacy on crack basically it really does psychologically impact our you know just kind of our motivation you know a lot of our people are demoralized a lot of our people feel like fuck you know like it's getting so bad and I challenge you, I challenge you to dig deep. I challenge you to look yourself in the mirror, to understand the importance and the value that you bring, to understand your historical placement, to understand and embrace you know, who you are as, as a beautiful brown person, to not shy away from yourself, to learn about your family history, to ask about your great, great grandparents, to ask about the indigenous roots in your culture. And to me, I am embracing, I am loving since the age of 15 when I started learning my history, learning my history and making the connection of resilience and continuity of continuing the traditions of my culture, to continuing the resistance of, of my ancestors, especially at a very young age, I was looking for my abuelitas. I was looking for my abuelitas in history. What did my great, great grandmothers do? You know, does this concept of feminism apply? What did we eat? What happened when women got their period? And when it got stronger than that is what type of models did we have? What was our society like? What was our legal system like? What was our culture like? All of these things, right? And as you're starting at that point in my journey of decolonization, everything just came together. Everything just came together. And I remember going to different high schools and junior highs, and I didn't have my bachelor's yet, you know? I was finishing barely my associates. I didn't even have my bachelor's yet. And I realized, I was like, you know what? I need to get those degrees. I need to put myself through that process 
because I need to understand what we're up against. You know, I know a lot of we're encouraging a lot of our youth to go to college and higher learning. But what does that mean? Are we equipping our youth with the tools that they need to nurture who they are, to continue to blossom as beautiful, resilient, brown, beautiful indigenous people of this continent as they transform and go on to these institutions? Because I will tell you, if you don't have a strong sense of who you are, if you don't have a strong sense of awareness of history as far as where you come from, from this part of the world, you know, the white supremacist system and the culture white supremacy that exists in many of these institutions, it's really going to you know, attack you. It's going to exhaust you. It's going to mentally deplete you. So, you know, you need to be strong. You need to be nurtured. You need to reach out to the people in your community that make you feel relevant, that make you feel important, that know that you have something of value in your skill and your work and your research and your connection. And the most important thing I will tell you, and again, I want to dedicate this to high school students and junior high students is take ownership of your education. And education is not just going to college and getting a degree. Education is life, how you are living life. Take ownership of that. Filter out negativity. Filter out people that don't believe in you. Filter out people that are hating on you. You know, filter, filter, filter. Because as you grow older and as you're learning your lessons, your education, because education is a lifelong process, you start realizing that life is a sacred, sacred journey, that this time that we have together, that we have, let's use it to cherish and impact and create changes that our ancestors couldn't even dream of. We want to be able to surpass what the pain has caused and taken away. We want to be able to reestablish ourselves. We want to be able to continue and reconstruct who we were for thousands of years. And remember this whole thing about white supremacy and being called illegal on our land. This this is a very, very, very recent construction of who we are under the concept of illegality. We are indigenous people, but in order for our resources and our land to be stolen and, and exploited the way they are, they had to create this fallacy. They had to create this concept uh, that dismisses us, right, from power, that dismisses us and says, oh, no, you're Hispanic. Oh, no, you're Latino. Oh, no, no, right? We are not any of those terms. And I think the most transformative part of all this is when you look in the mirror and you see an indigenous person, you say, fuck, after 500 years, after all of this, here we are. Here's my abuelita making tortillas. Here's my mom eating some corn. Here we are passing down, you know, recipes for healing and all this ancient knowledge that we carry and that is valuable to our communities. It's just so powerful. We have this, this beautiful cultural power. We have this beautiful ancient power that is repressed under this colonial structure of identity, of language, of religion, that basically tries to push down and cover up all this ancient and beautiful indigenous culture and power that we have. So with this, I just wanted to make a quick video for you to, to encourage you, to support you, to tell you that you are a beautiful brown being and that this is your land and to not let the noise of white supremacy and the haters and all of this, you know, self doubt and limit and, and all these, you know, you, you doubt yourself, second guessing yourself, you know, trust your journey, trust your growth, trust, trust your ancestors. They are guiding our process. What we need to do is be courageous enough to change, courageous enough to challenge ourselves, courageous enough for us to study, to really be critical and to really read and really observe what the world is producing without our control and is being presented as normal. And I challenge you, it doesn't matter what discipline you're in, I challenge you to contribute to the liberation of your people. I challenge you to contribute to the dismantling of white supremacist systems in the form of power, economic power, in the form of identity demographics and population, ethnic 
markers like Hispanic, Latino, Latinx. I challenge you to push forward in the struggle of resistance against white supremacy in a way that is constructive, in a way that is powerful, in a way that is creative, and in a way that you know you're bringing your community, you're bringing your people with you. And that change and that move is going to bring us towards better healing. It's going to bring us towards unity. It's going to bring us to a true education. And the true education of a colonized person really begins when you decolonize and you begin to indigenize and heal your presence within the relationships to all structures of power. And Again, I know it on, on different topics, but the most important thing I want you to know is that you matter, that what you think, what you say, what you create, who you are matters, especially in this historical time. We are reviving, we are waking up, and we are beautiful, lavishing, and resilient in our power. And I want to congratulate Class of 2019, I want to congratulate all my people that, gra that graduated from Cal State LA all over getting your degrees and not forgetting who you are and instead using these degrees as tools to further our people, to further resources, to further our education and to do so unapologetically and to do so without minimizing ourselves and to do so without watering ourselves down to make other people comfortable. This isn't about watering yourself down to making other people comfortable. This is about nurturing yourself to stepping up to your purpose and to being grateful and to being alive and present in the gifts that you have been given to transform our people, our liberation, and our future. Thank you so much for watching. This is Iklali, Nikandlaka Women Warriors, Nikandlaka University, Decolonizing Academia. I just graduated with my master's in history, cuma sum laude, and I am proud, 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 3.95 amidst everything else, through everything that I've gone through, through everything that I'm going through. I am resilient because I owe it to my ancestors. I owe it to my community, to my people today, and I owe it to my descendants. Tlazokamati. Tlazokamati means thank you and nahuatl. Se me cuidan todos, les mando saludos a todos, todas las clases que se graduaron este año de nuestra comunidad. Los quiero muchísimo. Gracias, Tlaxcamati.